Did anything, Michelle, stand out to you as, as far as Powell indicating how long this is going to last and, and what it's going to look like from here? I, I'm, I'm not sure he knows more than the rest of us. And he said it's, it's highly uncertain. And in fact, it's unknowable to predict the outcome right now. But just in terms of how long he's going to be using the tools and how big the stimulus programs that he's put in place are going to get. Sure. So to me, what stood out is that he said that said there's going to be considerable risks um, that remain for the medium term. Um, so he did give some sense of a time dimension here, which is that this is not a V-shaped recovery. It's not even close to that. There's going to be challenges that remain from in the economy from the coronavirus that the Fed is going to have to deal with for some time. And they are absolutely committed to keeping monetary policy accommodative in order to ensure that. And I think that primarily, you know, speaks to their commitment to the zero lower bound. It speaks to their commitment to continue with QE and keep the balance sheet large. But even on the credit facilities, they'll do more. They want to keep the credit flowing through the financial system into the real economy. I interpreted Powell to be actually quite dovish and concerned about the outlook and really trying to reinforce the fact that the Fed stands ready to fight this. David Zervo, so if that is, well, firstly, is that your interpretation as well? And uh, would the Fed chair have good reason to be uh, fairly downbeat given uh, what we saw from GDP this morning, which was down 5% thereabouts? quarter over quarter when March, of course, uh, was the only the beginning of the lockdown. I think I, I generally agree with that. I, I don't and I sort of agree with a lot of what Sarah said at the opening as well, which is he didn't add a lot new here. He, he really reiterated, I think, what we all knew, which is there's a massive Fed put. He's talking about the put. He's put it into virtually every market that we trade in. Uh, he's now put it into Main Street more. I think the market's going to going to test that, of course. And that's a lot of the questions about what Steve was going at in terms of uh, are they taking enough risk? Are they putting enough out there? Do they need to backstop more things? And the market's clearly debating things like uh, how far they should go into the leverage loan world or into more leverage spaces. So I think that's that's more the topic uh, of the future. But I don't think this meeting really moved the markets very much or perception very much. I think we're we're trading today on on optimism about uh, about Gilead. And, and I think the Fed gave you kind of exactly yeah. what they were supposed to give you, which is we're here, we're big, we can print, we got it. We're going to make sure that the good stuff is taken care of. The stuff that's kind of shaky, we're going to venture in there, but we're going to be careful. with it. Yeah, I mean, using the tools to ensure robust recovery is as bullish as it gets, I think, for the Federal Reserve. On top of the Gilead data you mentioned and a pretty bullish take from Dr. Fauci, two people with very high approval ratings right now among not just Wall Street, but uh, Americans uh, as well, according to some of the recent polling. Michelle, another comment that stood out to me from Powell, which I thought was actually pretty unusual, was he said, now is the time to use the great fiscal power of the United States. The Federal Reserve That's Chairman's it, pretty cautious usually when going into this mm -hmm. realm of fiscal policy. He mentioned fiscal policy a number of times and even suggested they need to do more and they don't need to worry about the debt. What do you make of that? Yeah, you're 100 percent. I mean, he, he caveat and said, you know, monetary policy is separate from fiscal policy. But he made it very clear that they need to be fighting this fight on both fronts, monetary and on the fiscal front, and specifically said that more can be done to make sure those that need access to credit get access to credit so that you don't have insolvencies, so that you don't have companies fall under um, and make it that much harder for the recovery to start once we're at that point. So um, and on the debt side, you know, he said, look, this is not the time to be thinking about a high debt level. That time will come. And he did acknowledge that, you know, one of the lessons learned perhaps in this, like, this, this cycle and this, 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 this environment is that to prepare for the next downturn, it would be good to get the fiscal house in order at some time. But that time is not now. The time now is to spend.